Welcome to Major League Rugby Inside the Ruck, a weekly magazine show featuring the hottest takes, highlights, profiles, and interviews from expert pundits, players, coaches, and characters. I'm veteran rugby journalist and your host, Pat Clifton. Behind the camera making the magic happen is College Sevens National Champion, Ryan Koberstein, and later we'll be joined by my co-host, former U.S. National Team member and Rugby World Cup and Super Rugby veteran, James Patterson. We'll take you behind the scenes of quarantine life for young veteran Juan Pablo Aguirre, and we'll check in with the voice of the league, Dan Power. Here at Inside the Ruck, we'll introduce you to the league's superstars, build its narratives, and provide unparalleled analysis and content week in and week out. Coming up in the next segment, we'll spill all the tea diving headfirst into transactions and gossip from a wild offseason. But first, I want to see if you can name this eagle. Here are a few clues. He's a former Glendale Raptor. He represented the USA at the 2011 Rugby World Cup. He has 21 caps for the Highlanders, and he's a back. The answer and all the Major League Rugby you can handle when we return to Inside the Ruck. Hello and welcome back to Major League Rugby Inside the Ruck. I am your host, Pat Clifton, joined as always by my co-host, James Patterson. Guys, what an absolute stud I'm joined by every week here in the studio. 12 caps for the USA, played for the Glendale Raptors before they were a Major League Rugby team back in the amateur days, and 21 caps as a pro for the Highlanders down in uh, Super Rugby. What a career you had, man. A long time ago now, a bit of a has-been, but happy to be here. Uh, a has-been for sure. We've got proof uh, later in the show, I promise. <laughs> uh, this is the part of the show where we're going to talk about all the exciting action from the offseason, the hot stove stuff, all of the new players, who's moved where, what are the rosters looking like heading into year four. So let's dive right in at the top of the marquee, the biggest names. These are the guys like Chris Robshaw, the former England captain, London Harlequins, coming over now to play for the San Diego Legion. He's probably the biggest name, but there's a bunch of other guys too, studs coming over. Who are some of the bigger names from overseas that you can't wait to see in the MLR? I mean, there's been a lot, and they keep dropping week to week, so it's great to see players. But if I'm going to look at players that are going to make an impact next season, I'm going to a position that I really feel can make a difference. Loose forward. We know Major League Rugby is all about generating quick ball. So you can beat teams by slowing down ball. And in order to generate quick ball, you've got to get over the gain line. And you need power running loose forwards for that. Two of them that I'm very excited to see, Tara Matembu. South African player, great pedigree, 29 years old, former captain of the Curry Cup side and played Super Rugby with the Sharks. Can play all across the back row. He's going to be a dynamic player. Another player that I'm looking forward to seeing is Kara Pryor. Kara Pryor out of Northland, the Tanafai in New Zealand, played Super Rugby for the Blues. He is in everything. He's got a nose when he gets over the top of the ball, and he's a great ball carrier in the wide channels, and he's going to make up quite a formidable back row up in New York with Hunko Hermeses. Absolutely. These guys, you got Kara up in New York, you got Tara in New England, the Boston-New York rivalry. These guys are going to have some huge collisions, both absolute bashers. Can't wait to see it. The guy that I'm stoked to see coming from overseas, he's a little more of a sleek player, probably going to play fullback for the San Diego Legion, and that is Cecil Africa, two-time World Rugby Sevens Player of the Year. Absolute dynamic lightning player. There isn't a skill in the game that he doesn't have in his toolbox. Fast, just unbeatable, and he was a star of the USA Sevens in Las Vegas at Sam Boyd Stadium year after year after year, helping the Springboks win a couple of a couple of cups, and I might have slipped on down to the sports book and put my name on him, put my money on his name a couple of times. Safe money. That's right, and he came up trumps for me. So Cecil Africa, a, a very exciting player to watch. Flowing dreads, so don't worry, Ma Nanu fans. You've got some more dreadlocks to, to cheer for this year. Can't wait to see him in a San Diego Legion jersey. And of course, we've got some homegrown Americans, too, that I'm excited about watching. One guy is going to be new to MLR fans, but not new to MLR players, and that is Langi Langi Hao Piakui. This guy comes out of Bay Area, he, he pro, out of absolutely nowhere a couple of years ago to make his debut in Pro Rugby North America, the, the pro league that made it one year right before MLR. And then he hops from there to the national team to a professional contract in Scotland and then kind of goes quiet the last couple of years. Rumor has it he's going to be booting up for the LA Guiltinis this year and he can bash with Kara and Tara, I promise you. One of the most absolute physical freaks I've ever seen on a rugby pitch. And MLR fans, I cannot wait for you to get your eyeballs on Langi Langi over there in LA. He'll be definitely be a name being called from upstairs in the box. I mean, he's a great player, really physical player. 
If I'm looking at some of the other additions, I'm gonna look at someone that perhaps slipped under the radar, an undrafted free agent coming out of a very, very prestigious collegiate rugby program. Lindenwood, synonymous with Sevens national titles, and a player, Christian Rodriguez. He heads down to the Jackals. He's a very dynamic player for pound for pound, one of the most agile players out of college rugby. They're gonna play him at nine or look to transition him. He'll probably actually end up back in his natural position, but I'm excited to see how he goes at major league rugby level. Actually, similar skill set to a Cecil Africa, kind of yeah. playing 15 in college, you know? but much smaller and, uh, and obviously an American version of that. So I can't wait to see what he develops into and, and maybe he can uh, prove that he should have been drafted in the first ever MLR draft. Um, and then let's look at some of the guys who played for one team last year and are through trades or transfer or free agency are on another team this year. None bigger than JP Duplessis, the star center for the San Diego Legion, now moving over to Nola Gold. A, a shock move, frankly. What do you think of his relocation? I just think it's great that we've been talking about this. We mentioned before, Major League Rugby's first draft, and then we had some trade action, and no bigger trade action. The biggest trade of Major League Rugby so far. That is an excellent trade. JP Duplessis goes to NOLA for a little bit of cap space, and he's gonna be, he was the linchpin, one of the linchpins in the most dynamic attack in Major League Rugby, the Legion. Now he heads to NOLA, where he'll make an immediate impact. Absolutely. And another guy that I know that you and I both love is a really young guy, great story, goes straight from high school to the Glendale Raptors Academy, to Major League Rugby Academy, and now is, is, is on his way to the LA Guiltini. He's part of that Glendale diaspora as all their players are spread across the league. And he's a really young up-and-comer. Tell me what you think about Mika Cruze, a guy that I know we both watched the last couple of years. It's been fun to watch him. Came out of high school, went into the Glendale Academy, and then featured for Glendale. I thought the first couple seasons, a bunch of raw talent. The Eagles recognized that. He was on the bench against New Zealand Mari. He has a big future in the game, but he tried to force things a little bit too much, and that was a little immaturity because he was a young player. But seeing him this year transform, being put outside of an excellent player like Rene Ranger, it was like he just took a breath. You saw him fit in and rely on his natural talent. He was able to play immensely better than he did the following season, previous season. I mean, to go from playing, you know, the training pitches of, of high school rugby in Fresno, California, to training right next to a seasoned all black like Rene Ranger, uh, thank you, Major League Rugby. That's the Major League Rugby difference. We're going to go throw it to break real quick, but before we do, I'm going to tell you what we're going to come back to, and that's a little peek behind the scenes of life for a Major League Rugby journeyman. We followed around J.P. Aguirre, a veteran center who's got a new home coming up this season, and uh, that and a lot more when we come back. When Major League Rugby's third season screeched to an abrupt halt thanks to the pandemic, it kicked off a seemingly endless hiatus from the game. As they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder, and no one felt that more deeply than the players themselves. For Juan Pablo Aguirre, the 26-year-old Argentine center, formerly of both Austin and Rugby United New York, the opportunity to get back on the pitch and train with the Kansas City Blues in preparation for his third MLR campaign, having recently signed with the Seattle Seawolves, was one he couldn't pass up. He's a, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been hard. It's actually mentally pretty hard. I was three, two, three months without doing anything, just training in my house, lifting, running by myself. Like, mentally it's hard. Aguirre's path to professional rugby has been anything but a straight line. He rose through the club ranks back home in Buenos Aires to represent Argentina as one of the best players on the planet in his age grade at the 2013 Under-20 World Championships. Alongside future world stars like All Blacks Scott Barrett and Artie Savea, South African seven sensation Cibolo Sanatla, and England's Jack Knoll and Anthony Watson. I went to that Junior World Cup already with my shoulder injured but it happened right before it and I didn't want to have surgery. So I had surgery after the Junior World Cup uh, and that kind of like bring me down of the squad and going into my second Junior World Cup, uh, I broke my shoulder again playing for my club. Taking a year off from the game to heal did no favors for Juan Pablo's quest to play for Argentina's senior national team or to follow his Pumita teammates to the pros. When I was in the Junior World Cup, that was my, my main goal. Uh, I thought that after that I was going to go play in Europe, uh, play for the big leagues, and yeah, that would be my future. But that injury came, came right on time for crashing my dreams in a way. It was hard, uh, I'm not going to lie. It was mentally hard, uh, kind of like rethink everything twice. Uh, but I just let it, I let it go, I let it go with the flow and keep moving forward. 
With professional rugby now firmly on the back burner and his father taking a job in New Jersey, Aguirre decided to follow his family to the States in pursuit of an education. Fortunately, I have a rugby scholarship in a university here in America, and that gave me the opportunity to do both. Maybe not at the same level, but now I have a degree and I keep playing rugby. Aguirre made an instant impact at Lindewin University, nestled in suburban St. Louis, helping the Lions win the 2018 Penn Mutual Collegiate Rugby Championship and to a Final Four appearance in 15s. Major League Rugby then kicked off its inaugural campaign at the end of his sophomore season, rekindling an old dream. I was like, okay, now I'm here. Like, I'm living in America. There's a professional league here in America. Uh, I'm playing great level in college rugby, so maybe I'm, I'm going to be able to like, make it to the league and it happened. As a rookie, JP earned seven caps for Austin, starting across the midfield at fly half, inside and outside center. Though Austin went 0-16 that season, New York took notice of his play, recruiting him for 2020. However, thanks to injury and COVID, Aguirre would never pull on the Rooney pinstripes. They decided to release me uh, in the open list players, and that day they released me, my term and called me, he's like, uh, what do you think about Seattle? <laughs> uh, I was like, Man, to be honest, I love the city, I love the team. I know it's a great organization, the best fans in the league. Um, so yeah, if there's an opportunity over there, I, th I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to develop as a player. And they want me on my natural position, which is uh, inside center, so that's good. Three clubs in three years may seem like too many, but for Aguirre, like many foreign-born MLR players, collecting stamps in his passport is half the fun. I've been traveling a lot. Uh, I've been exploring the USA. Living in different cities kind of opened my head a little bit, opened my mind, different cultures, different... Texas is really different to New York, and I, I bet Seattle's gonna be really different to, to anything else. Every city. All right, wow, that's a lot. Tennessee, Notre Dame, Kansas City, New York City, LA, San Diego, was in Hawaii this year. England, France, Ireland, Wales, Spain, Uruguay, Brazil. Though JP has certainly soaked up life as a Rolling Stone, he's ready to plant some roots and hopefully win some championships. It's been good, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready to settle. Uh, the next few years of my career are going to be good to settle. So if that happens in Seattle, more than welcome, but you never know. Hello and welcome back to Inside the Ruck. Hopefully you enjoyed that little slice of life uh, with J.P. Aguirre, MLR veteran journeyman. Of course, now moving over to the Seattle Seawolves. Uh, you spent a little time coaching him. Saw you in the background of some of those clips. What do you think about J.P. and as he makes his move over to Seattle? What a great story and, and a tremendous individual off the field. On the field, though, I think he's got a lot to offer Major League Rugby. I was upset to see his season get cut short this last year because I really thought that he would have got his chance with Rooney and he would have done very well. So it's going to be awesome to see what he can do up at Seattle. Absolutely. Um, last segment we talked about a lot of player movement, where everybody's going to end up and, and some of the changes on the field. Now let's talk about some of the off the field changes. Some of the biggest one, the biggest storyline every year in the off season for Major League Rugby is expansion. Who are the new teams? Who are the new mascots, the new colors? The, what do the new jerseys look like that we're going to be following? And we've got two new teams this year, the Los Angeles Guiltinis and the Dallas Jackals. What can you tell us about the Los Angeles Guiltinis, James? Well, the Guiltinis, they're certainly going to shake or stir things up out in L.A. I know everything Adam Gilchrist gets behind certainly has flair. Their jerseys are a talking point of the league. But let's put that aside and let's look at this, what they've done with the foundation for the side. They put together a very, very good coaching staff. They've got Darren Coleman, Stephen Hoyles, and of course, Alex Corbusero as part of their coaching staff. It's going to be very easy for them to recruit to LA, knowing that they've got that coaching staff there, knowing the city of LA and its allure to foreigners, especially New Zealanders and Australians. And then now they've, you're starting to see that creep through with some of their signings. Of course, Harry and Sean McNulty, a couple of players that are heading into this franchise next season, they'll be great additions to the side. Harry McNulty, the most capped Irish sevens player of all time. And then Sean, of course, played with the New England Free Jacks last year. 
And he's American eligible, so he actually counts for them as a domestic player. So, yeah, exciting guys. And then, of course, down in Dallas, you've got part of the NBA invasion of MLR. You've got, of course, we've got George Killebrew, who worked for the Dallas Mavericks for 20-odd years under Mark Cuban and is now the commissioner of Major League Rugby. And then the new owner of the Dallas Jackals is none other than Donnie Nelson, the longtime general manager of the Dallas Mavericks. Mark Cuban, an IU rugby guy, big-time yeah. rugby fan. A lot of rugby connections here in the Dallas and the NBA. So it's going to be exciting to have this celebrity owner now. And uh, they're going to be playing at a Globe Life Park, home of the Texas Rangers, a, a big, shiny stadium and venue. And then another first in Major League Rugby, probably the first uh, assistant general manager in all of professional rugby across the world, Elaine Vassie. She's also going to be the attack coach. So big things going on in Dallas as well. And then, of course, every year we also have the coaching carousel, some of the different changes. In New England last year, we had Josh Smith, a longtime rugby yeoman, won a couple of amateur national championships here with Mystic River. He led the Free Jacks in their inaugural season. They got cut short. He's going to take a step back now and, and take over the academy side and coach the independents, which is making room for a guy that you know quite a bit about, Ryan Martin, who's from back home, the land of the long white cloud. What can you tell us about Ryan Martin? Yeah, Ryan Martin, highly touted coach in New Zealand, came through the rankings, started with Otago Boys High, moved up. He's been the attack coach for the Otago Mitre 10 Cup squad the last few years. They play a great brand of rugby. He's also been involved in Super Rugby with the Melbourne Rebels. It'll be interesting to see what kind of flair and what kind of structure he puts in around this team. They were exciting last year. They're going to be even more exciting this season. And of course, maybe the biggest splash in all of Major League Rugby was you had Rob Hoadley um, relieved of his duties at the San Diego Legion. He'd done a great job there for the first couple of years. And uh, now Zach Test is going to be the longtime USA 7 star, going to be the co-head coach, along with Scott Murray, the former Scotland uh, international star. And, and the consultant, though, that is going to come in over the top of them, none other than England head coach Eddie Jones, the biggest star in world rugby coaching. What do you think about that move? Uh, I mean, what can you not say about this move? It, what a terrific opportunity, both for the two young head coaches to be able to have that mentorship from a guy named like Eddie Jones. But Eddie Jones' pedigree, everywhere he goes in the world, he leaves his fingerprint. And that fingerprint is attacking dynamic rugby. We saw the transformation of Japan rugby. We've seen how England have started to play more of an attacking game plan. Let's see what he can do to already a formidable offense in San Diego. You got celebrity coaches, celebrity owners, exciting times for Major League Rugby. Before we throw it to break, let's tell the folks what they're going to be coming back to. And it's a little clip of you and the voice of the league, Dan Power, two former international stars, former Eagles. I assume some just precise kicking and a, and a wonderful display of athleticism. If there was a lot of Photoshop editing, you'll see some good kicking. Otherwise, you can skip this next segment. <laughs> we'll be right back with some more rugby at Inside the Ruck. We're here with the voice of the league, Dan Power. Dan, welcome to Kansas City. James, great to be in the Midwest again. I love it. You might say Dan Power's witnessed Major League Rugby early years from a bird's eye view. Not just because he's a former Eagle teammate of mine, having represented his country 12 times, but because of his elevated pitch side perch from the commentary box. Power has been an MLR commentator from the beginning. As a fly half who signed free agency punting contracts with Miami Dolphins and Minnesota Vikings, he fancies himself a bit of a kicking expert. When he came through Kansas City recently, I challenged him to a friendly kicking duel and some MLR banter. Hit me! In the pocket! In the pocket! Oh, he's got it! He's got it! Oh! There's a P! There's a P. Not for Patterson either. It's all in the job, James. Just want to go down. Oh, he's... No, oh, you shelled it! This will be a lot better for you, just being able to see it go straight through. You see it's all in the drop? That was horrible. Weighed down by an additional quarantine 15 and facing a brutal win, his old dad legs struggled to find their mark. Honestly, we hardly made any kicks whatsoever. I swear, we used to be good at this sort of thing. Nonetheless, we enjoyed taking some jabs at one another, and the voice of MLR spilled the tea on the league's best kickers. Two points behind. Yep. Who do you got in the pocket? Pick one MLR player. I do not play. Eyes through the veins. Take me out of the equation for now, yeah? All right, easy, easy choice here. Uh, I'm going Joe Peterson, San Diego League. Put yourself in any stadium in the world in any situation right now. 
We'll go Randall's Island, New York. Yep. Nyack 75, Old Blue Zero. And okay. I'm just finishing the game here. Righto. Dan even taught us one of the tricks of the trade for any elite ball striker, sinking your kick to a favorite tune. Lose my mind. Lose my mind. Yep. And I hit me, baby, one more time. Oh. Yep. Oh. That was about as ugly as you. That's it. Game over. I think Brittany might actually sue you for that, for doing <laughs> that to her song. <laughs> good man. You're a good man, JP. You're a good man, DP. You're a good man. You're a good man. Kansas City. What a city, Kansas City. Welcome back to our final segment. We're going to look into our crystal ball and tell you exactly what to expect out of MLR's fourth season, yeah? So we're going to go straight to the hot takes, all right? Don't be surprised if these things happen. You ready? Don't be surprised if a craft cocktail-themed team lifts the shield at the end of this season. You heard me. I think the Gilgronies out of Austin or the Giltinis out of L.A. Austin finished the bottom of the league. We've got an expansion team in L.A. Don't be surprised if either one of these teams wins the whole thing. Star-studded coaching staff, star-studded players. And you, in L.A., you've had a lot of time for them to prepare. I, I have no doubt with the names that have been announced already, they're going to be able to catch up pretty quickly. And in Austin, you've now got that coaching staff an entire year to coalesce and, and gel and work together. I think that the uh, Gilgronis or the Giltinis are going to have very trending up types of seasons. You'll be trending up on Twitter with all the Gilgroniacs after that statement, but here's mine. And outside backs, inside backs, any back, please forgive me. Don't be surprised if the top try scorer in 2021 Major League Rugby has a number two on his back. Yep, hookers, dynamic try scorers, prolific try scorers two seasons ago, Dylan Fawcett, Tied the top of the league with John Ryberg with 12 tries in one season. Last season, we saw hookers up the top of the board. We saw prop even on the top of the board. So next season, watch out, front rowers, they're coming across the white chalk, and they will be your leading try scorer in 2021. The great malls of America. Usually the hooker throws the line out, gets to the back of the mall, and is the one who gets to reap the rewards. Uh, certainly had a, some great line outs uh, throughout Major League Rugby, so I won't be surprised, sir, if a forward does indeed lead uh, the league and tries. Let's also jump to the biggest prediction of all, all right? Who is going to be your Major League Rugby 2021 champion? Who is good? We've now got the East Coast going against the West Coast, split into two conferences. They're going to meet in the championship game. Who's going to win this thing? For me, it's going to be the first winner from Canada. It's going to be the Arrows. So if I watch where they're training to last season, they're not the flashiest team out there, but they're a well gelled team. They spend a lot of time together. A lot of the Canadian national team are together in a high performance environment year round. You sprinkle in the flair from the Jaguares down in South America, Uruguayan players. I really like the brand of rugby they play. I think they're very good at set piece and I just think they're very consistent. So they will win the season for me. San Diego Legion, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. This year, I think with Eddie Jones, you still got continuity in the coaching staff, even with the new expertise. Some of the great stars they brought in to replace the likes of Mananu and JP Duplessis, I don't think they're going to skip a beat. I got the Legion winning it all. Keeping the shield here in America, that's what's going to happen, guys. You can go and take it to the bank. That's going to do it for us here at Major League Rugby. I'm Pat Clifton. I'm James Patterson. This has been Inside the Ruck. Come back next week.